Hi second year, um, welcome to your first geography lesson. I thought that for our first uh, lesson together this week, uh, it would be a really good idea if we did something a bit different and um, a bit practical too. You may have noticed that over the last month we've had some absolutely amazing weather. I'm sure it has not escaped your attention. Uh, but a really good question that we ask in geography is why things in the world around us are doing what they do. And so today's topic is about where clouds come from and why it rains. Now, there are some basic concepts that we covered in first year. Namely, that when water gets warm, it can evaporate. And when it evaporates up into the sky, it cools down. And that causes the moisture to condense into a cloud that can then form rain. However, we're now in second year, so we need to tell the rest of the story because there are some significant gaps in that story. And the main gap is to do with air pressure. So what is air pressure? The first thing to do is to imagine some air. You've probably never thought about it before. It's around you all the time, but we don't really notice it. But air is a real physical thing. For example, you can fill your lungs with it. You can move your hand through it and feel the air moving past your fingers. We could, if we wanted to, get a very sensitive scientific set of scales and weigh some air. Air is a physical thing which has weight. Now that we've got that concept floating around in our imaginations, let's try and imagine a bit of air rather like a sponge. Imagine that this sponge is in fact some air that we can see. Air can either be squeezed, and that's called high pressure air, or it can be relaxed, and that's low pressure air. High pressure air, because it's squeezed, is unable to absorb moisture, and therefore no clouds and no rain. Low pressure air, which is more relaxed, is able to absorb moisture and create rain. If I dip the sponge in its low pressure state into some water, you can see that it is not only absorbed the water, but it's able to hold it. And of course, with a little bit of a squeeze, I can make it kind of sort of rain. Let's see what happens though, if I take the sponge in a high pressure state and put it in the water. So this time I'm squeezing the sponge, I'm dipping it in the water. I really have to work much harder to get any rain out of my sponge. So what this serves to demonstrate is that air can be one of two states. It can be high pressure, unable to absorb moisture, or low pressure, more able to absorb moisture. And that's largely due to the amount of space between the molecules of air. High pressure air uh, has fewer spaces between its, or less space between its molecules, and therefore it's less able to absorb the moisture. Low pressure air has more space between its molecules, and so it is able to absorb moisture. Typically, that's because low pressure air is warmer, so it's more expanded. Let's see if we can find another way of um, visualizing this, however. Just uh, dry off my kitchen counter here. Um, so to do this, I need a Coke bottle or whatever, a plastic bottle, with a little bit of water in the bottom. The amount of water is not a specific amount, just a wee splash. Now, I'm demonstrating this to you, and that's sufficient, but if you want to try this for yourself, then I must insist, as an instruction to you, that you seek your mum or your dad, your parent or guardian, um, their assistance, because it involves using matches. And you need your parents' permission uh, so they can be sure that this is happening in a safe way. That's not negotiable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
light the matches and blow them out. And then once I've blown them out, pop them in the bottle. I'm not going to let go of them. I'm just going to let the smoke from the matches drift into the bottle. And then I'm going to shake the bottle, I'll put the lid on and shake the bottle up. And the water will mix and stick to the pollution that I have introduced to the bottle. An interesting fact about clouds is that the raindrops that make them up are only visible to you, if you think about it, water see-through, so how are clouds visible to us? They're only visible to you because those cloud droplets have actually stuck to tiny, tiny particles of pollution floating through the air. And that's what the cloud droplets gather around and that's why clouds are visible. So, let's hope this works. So you can see here, I'm letting the smoke just drift off into the bottle. That's probably enough. There's no particular science to it. I've lost my bottle lid. Here it is. And then I'm going to shake it up. Okay. Now, hopefully my uh, phone camera will keep up with this bit. Um, if I raise the air pressure in the bottle, what I've done is I've squeezed the bottle. I'm therefore squeezing the sponge of air inside the bottle, making the amount of space available to absorb moisture less. This is high air pressure in here now. So there is no cloud. However, if I lower the air pressure, I get a cloud. High air pressure. You can see my face relatively well through the bottle. Low air pressure. And thank goodness you can't see my face. High air pressure. Low air pressure. High. Low. Hi -ya. Low. High air pressure is squeezed air. Therefore it cannot absorb moisture and make clouds. Low air pressure is relaxed air that can absorb moisture and make clouds. And if you still can't see, then hopefully this will help you to see. Um, sorry. What I can do is actually, and this may not work, oh, maybe you can see I can actually create cloud rings by squeezing the bottle. There goes one. Here's one. I don't know how well that's going to come out for you watching this at home. And if you can see that, you can see that far more is coming out of the bottle than ever went in in the first place. And that's a real cloud in a bottle. Really important guys, if you're going to do that at home, you need to ask a parent for a bit of help and uh, permission to uh, use matches and that will make sure that it happens in a safe way. Uh, remember, that's uh, an instruction. So, if you've watched this lesson all the way from the beginning to the end, you'll know that clouds form on low pressure days. And that's because the air, just like a sponge, is more relaxed and it can absorb moisture and carry it into the sky where it can cool down and form droplets and fall as rain. On a high pressure day though, the air is much more squeezed. Therefore, it cannot absorb any moisture and no moisture can go into the air, therefore, and no clouds can form and no rain will happen. So that's why we've had such a heat wave in May, the hottest May on record. It's due to high pressure air. Now, you should be ready now to do the quiz that I've set you. So click in to show my homework and you can do the quiz and get a grade for this homework. Okay.